So hello, I'm Tom, and uh, Kuhn and I, together with uh, actually the founders of Brucon, we're going to give you a small introduction for the 10th edition. Uh, as I'm sure you know, it's our anniversary edition, being the 10th. And we have prepared some slides, a li little bit last minute. It's going to be some improv, but we want to explain you a bit what happened over the last 10 years and also what, we, what Brucon has all become. Quickly some heads up, so we are recording and this is actually live streaming already right now. So essentially the people who are sitting somewhat here will be in the viewing point. So if you don't want to be streamed or recorded, don't sit here. <laughs> Everything over there should be fine. Uh, I'm just saying because <laughs> privacy and stuff. Um, so <laughs> that would be the first uh, on the practical side of things. Um, so I actually want to start uh, with giving the mic to the, the founders of Brucon and let them introduce themselves. So, Benny, since you have the mic, I would suggest to start. So my name is uh, Benny Ketelslegers. Um, like uh, I said, I was one of the founding members together with these fine gentlemen here. Uh, nowadays, I work as a threat researcher for Cisco Talos. Hi, I'm uh, Philip Whitens. Uh, as you can see, one of the five here. Um, and I'm working for a four-letter organization. <laughs> <laughs> so hi, I'm uh, Sebastian De Leersneider or, or Seba. Um, also, ob obviously, one of the, the guys who started it. Otherwise, won't not be here. Um, I also started a couple of other things. Uh, one of it uh, is uh, Torium, uh, the company uh, we have here in the, the booth as well. Hi, I'm Philip. One of these guys, <laughs> currently working uh, for a startup in uh, Silicon Valley, AVI Networks. And together with these guys, uh, we've been doing this for 10 years. So, thanks for being here. Hello, my name is Peter. I work for a 13-letter uh, organization <laughs> startup. <laughs> um, I've, uh, I haven't been here for more than seven years. Um, and I think I flew about 26 hours to fucking get here, which is a long <laughs> journey. Thanks for that one. <laughs> so, would you, any of you guys actually do, can anybody comment on why you guys started it? Do you have like some thing you can share about why you started Brucon? So as far as my recollection goes, um, being passionate about security, uh, most of us, we loved going to security conferences uh, for the talks, meeting other people. Uh, I think the biggest one in Europe is uh, the CCC, which used to be in Berlin. So especially Peter, I would always bump into him and some other Belgians. So these became like usual suspects. And um, of course, being a good Belgian, having a beer, um, we were so like, you know, France has one, Netherlands has one, Germany has one, but why don't we have one in Belgium? We have our own technology here, uh, we have some good people here. So yeah, like over a beer, we said like, let's, let's try to organize one in Belgium, uh, but we can do this by ourselves. Yeah, so we went out to uh, people that we knew, contacts, uh, other community leaders like OWASP. Um, so yeah, the, the five of us, we got together uh, again over a beer and uh, we started discussing it and that's how the ball got rolling and um, at first it wasn't easy, it's, we never done something like that before. So we reached out to other organizers, uh, kind of collect information and we wanted to keep it accessible, yeah, like a community event. So we wanted to uh, not do it too commercially, too expensive. So we, we needed volunteers for that. And uh, it was a, a big challenge uh, to find those volunteers, like an unknown conference. So the first year was, was pretty tough. Uh, but yeah, we did a second one, and more and more people started uh, showing up. I think this is actually one of the first volunteers to show up ever. And I think uh, it's, it's one of the few that did every edition, so uh, Xavier, I have to thank him for all. But I don't want to mention too many names because there's so many people that have to be thanked for that and, and still doing that today. So uh, I, that's my point of view uh, in, into the history of Brucon. Uh, if you guys want to add something. That's correct, Benny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, um, I, I think it definitely it's, uh, we, we all shared a little bit the same idea of starting it up. Um, one of the things that made it happen is that we had the opportunity, and I was still working with the Linders then, that they sponsored the first uh, venue 
uh, because we, we, we literally started with zero euros, so we had to do it somewhere. So the first edition was in the surf house, uh, and but which was very fun. Also, the reason that it's called Brucon is because it was Brussels con. So, uh, but we didn't change the name to Hecon. That would be the, a little bit weird. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, Thing I recall for the most, that's not the reason why we started it, was that we were all baking french fries in front of the surf house. Yeah. I swear that was one of the biggest anecdotes ever happened at Brucon, but it was a challenge to bake for I think 300 people, french fries. The tractor that came with Yeah, it was even with a tractor, so. <laughs> in Brussels. Don't know if somebody here actually calls that, but it was like <laughs> very big fun. <laughs> but, uh, Peter. And I think one of the potential names we had was Beercon, no? Yeah. Which we scratched and we replaced to Brucon. Oh, really? Uh -huh. And Beacon, Beacon as well. Beacon. Yeah, yeah. Really? Oh. Yeah. Beercon, Belgium Con. Yeah. So essentially, I mean, I, I think we can also conclude you guys essentially started it to have a reason to get away from your partners and drink and then talk about cybersecurity. <laughs> Maybe. 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 We're not going to confirm that. We're not going to confirm nor <laughs> deny that, I guess. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, okay. Actually, I wanted to do, because we've been talking now about 10 years, right? And I wanted to ask everybody to participate because I actually want to get a view on things. Can I ask everybody to stand up for me? It's a quick check. Because I actually, I'm really curious to get to see how many people actually have attended how many editions. So if this is your first edition, please go and sit. Okay. Wow. <laughs> okay, now we're talking. Is it your second edition? Please take a seat. So I'm going up there. You guys as well. Third. Still people standing up, that's good. Fourth. Yes. Fifth. Yeah, Sophia, you can keep standing up, I know. Sixth. Seven. Now I also Did have to sit down. <laughs> yeah, I also have to start sitting down, to be honest. So, are, are there still people? I see Trey, obviously. Huh? Still people standing up. Eight, can we continue? Yeah. Well, nine, and then we're all out. So, thanks. It actually gave us somewhat of a picture. Uh -huh. ah. so, thanks so much. Thank you. Really sorry, I didn't see you there. So a lot of newcomers, apparently. So uh, you're here, as I said, in for a treat because you're already here at the 10th edition. Uh, so let's hope that we learn something over these last nine years and 10 years now and that we bring you a full experience. So we prepared some slides to go to a little bit to talk about the history. Um, perhaps we can go on that one. So this is essentially what I found back. This is the first blog post uh, on January 25th of 2009. I guess you cannot really read it that well, but essentially it's, it's, ref it's referring to your blog, Xavier, by the way. So uh, <laughs> you can consider this. Uh, this can be considered as the official launch of the event. This is what the blog post said. Uh, it's a hacker conference. It explains hackers. It's still the thing that's still on our website, by the way. Uh, so this is the first thing I found back. So let's consider it the birth of the, the organization, the 25th of January. Actually, if you continue, this is how the website looked like. And honestly, if you recall the website of a couple of months back, it still looked like this. So it, it took us quite a while to get to a great, new website. And there's a whole story behind that, but we need some beers to start explaining <laughs> that one. So we actually stuck, uh, we actually st uh, sticked with the same website for, for many years. Uh, it was vulnerable as hell, so we didn't patch it. I mean, if somebody really started it, <laughs> yeah, uh, not always. <laughs> it was hard to, the only reason we didn't patch it, because then the team was no longer compatible with, with the latest edition. The latest version, so we have the same thing that companies have, <laughs> issues with passion. So this is essentially how the first website looked like. Uh, there are pretty old icons on there, and, but as I said, it's the website that lasted until last year, and then finally we found some time to renew that one. And you, talk, you guys talked about the first edition. It was at the Belgacom surf house back then. Mm -hmm. We just found some pictures there, how it actually looked like. I, I think the atmosphere and, and, and the way you guys did it the first year, I think we can represent a little bit what we're doing here right now. It was 
special lighting. It's a very special place to be. A lot of international people who came there like the environment, like the way that you guys handled it. So this is a little bit just to paint a picture of, of what you guys brought. And we actually, I found back uh, uh, an after video of the first edition. I don't know if you guys knew that existed. Somebody mm -hmm. made an after video of the first edition. It's pretty long, uh, six minutes, but you know what? We're just going to start it. Uh, if there's time at the end. If there's time at the end. Oh, we, have, we have scheduled at the end. And anyway, it's on YouTube and it just, <laughs> you guys all get into the picture and you, you look much younger then. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, so that's about it. So that's, that's more or less a first edition. Uh, so that was in Brussels. I think we did two years over there, right? Yeah. And then it was, the venue was no longer available. And then we had to move to, uh, to the VUB. Well, that's so. so Please take we me have back. Like, Say bye if you. No, we have some stories here that we said over the edition. So, the first edition, Philip already mentioned the Fritkult. <laughs> <laughs> so there was no. F I wasn't there, so correct me if I'm wrong. There was no food at the venue, so you guys had to drag in uh, a fry shop, to, and you were ma baking your own fries in there. Yeah, the tractor on the highway. Tractor on the highway. Okay, tractor <laughs> on the highway. Got the Fritkult over there. And who was the, the, the guy in charge of baking all the fries? The girl? Benny? Benny. <laughs> it was Benny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. OK. So from there on, I heard there was no storage space. So all the material was in the basement of Marijke. Everything had to be dragged down from there, all up all the stairs, into vans, into cars, trying to get it to the venue. Then we moved on to the VUB. A nice venue with over 9,000 entrances <laughs> that all needed to be guarded for people not to go in, go out, run away with material. That's my first edition. I remember uh, you dragging me in like, we need more people, can't you help out here? And unfortunately, I said yes, and now we are here seven years later. <laughs> <laughs> If you guys have more anecdotes on any edition. So, so where, where's the story of that German guy that ended up in hospital the day before he was speaking? Because, who, Marius? Mar yeah, yeah, the, yeah, that one. That was Mario Heidrich, yes. Oh, yeah. uh, and what, tell the story now. No, the name is out anyway, so. He was, he was in, in, in hospital after probably having too much Belgian beers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should think that Germans can hold their drinks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So then after the VUB went to Ghent, this venue here, so it was BrewerCon 4. Yeah. A complete new city, complete new venue. The workshop spaces were in Hut Pond, so a bit further even than Novotel now, with their own difficulties. Uh, training took place in the monasterium. In the monasterium, sure. In a very old <laughs> hotel slash venue. Uh, with, with some Wi-Fi. With yes. some Wi-Fi, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Occasionally Wi-Fi. Uh, yeah, it was our, I mean, it was the first time we came to Ghent, and I know Seba and I, I know we were staking out the locations where we could actually hold, host a venue, and I know when we, we did a visit of this one together, and then I, I recall uh, that we arrived here, we were like, okay, this is it. Sorry, this is it. This was perfect for what do we want to do. We have this room. It's a very old building, but it, it has enough room for, for the people we want. We have a nice location for, to socialize for the sponsors. We have the village area next to it. It was immediately perfect. We would obviously like to have a an, uh, an, uh, location where we could also do the workshops on site, but yeah, you cannot find something like that with then still, still smaller breakout rooms. But this is, this is what we needed, and we've been staying with that for the, for the last seven years then. Yeah, the thing that we noticed the first year is we had some issues with parking outside. Yes. We asked the police to set up some parking spots, and then they came because we couldn't park there. Yeah, and, and there, there's, I don't know, it will come, we didn't really mention it, but for the people who are around here, uh, who are from around, I would say, uh, and know how difficult it is to drive around Ghent. I mean, I guess most of you guys know where the workshops are. Uh, it's at the Novotel, right? So that's where we stay. Um, and it's walking distance, I mean, two minutes, I mean, time takes you two minutes and you're there. 
It took us once an hour and a half to drive from there to here. Yes, Sophia. <laughs> Sophia had to do it. So, I mean, just, just to, we had a lot of boxes. We said, like, yeah, let's do it via the, with the car. It's easier. So you had to go all the way to the wing of Ghent and come back. And with all the traffic, an hour and a half for something you walk on. I mean, two minutes top. So it comes, every city comes with its own challenges. And from logistic mm -hmm. purposes and parking purposes, it's always been a challenge. Yeah. Fifth edition, we had a trainer, trainer who fell asleep yes. while teaching his yes. course. So uh, that's always nice. <laughs> I, I've been taking up the training coordination for, for the last couple of the years, actually, and, and there's this one edition where the trainers actually fall, fall asleep during, when he was given his course. And so some of the students came up to me like, hey, you know what? The trainer is asleep. I was like, no way. <laughs> so I went to the training room, and the guy was literally sitting there. There were 20 students who had a pretty full room. He's literally sitting there and sleeping like that. It's the same guy, by the way, who then the next day he had to present here at the conference, and he arrived like one minute before his talk. Literally one minute. He was at the registration desk one minute before he was supposed to talk. And we were like, dude, where were you? I'm on time. One minute, come on, <laughs> get your ass on stage. Are you ready? Do you have your slides? Yeah, I have them somewhere. I mean, come on, those are always practical stuff you have to take care of. But anyway, uh, and then the year after that, and I remember it was Philip who arranged that to get uh, Mutz here for, uh, for a Kali workshop. So he's one of the founders of Kali, I can say, I guess. The, the, the founder. founder. The founder. Uh, and Philip uh, got, uh, got him over here to do a one-day training on Kali, which we were very happy about. Obviously, it's very cool. And then two days before, he called you, or three days before, I don't recall, saying, like, hey, I need to go to the hospital because I need to get my appendix removed. <laughs> Okay, we have 35 students scheduled for you on Wednesday. <laughs> Will you make it? Well, we'll see. And mm -hmm. that's the uncertainty that we had to live with, right? So eventually he arrived. He still had some medication to go on, and he survived. The course went, went on. But I mean, these are the challenges and one of the stories, many stories we had of Brucon. Next year. On our party, we had a DJ who got way too drunk. It's always fun when a drunk DJ wants to party. And of course, that year we decided that doing one conference wasn't enough. So we started Cyber School, a conference for kids just before, just so we had some work to do during the weeks before Brucon. That's now going on since four years as well. And okay, yeah. now another thing. <laughs> at, at the eighth edition, Club Mate, whose idea is it? to have that here. Come on. <laughs> who? Who? Penny. Seriously? So we can I can I get a show of hands who actually likes that? <laughs> Because I've, as a crew member, I've been trying to get rid of it, but there's always one guy who's just like, no, I veto this, yeah. we need to of keep course. it. And I'm always like, it's ashtray water, come on, it doesn't taste all good. <laughs> okay, seriously, yeah. is it only me? So if there wouldn't have been Club Mate, the first edition would have never happened. It would have never happened, okay, <laughs> so, okay. Okay, so Fair enough. We used to drive to Germany to get the Club Mate. Then we found a store in, uh, near to Leuven, who had Club Mate, like four years ago. And then three years ago, I found out that there is a store like right across the street who also has Club Mate. So we were renting <laughs> vans, getting it all in, uh, in, from Germany to <laughs> Leuven, bringing it here. But then and then we realized we could just pick it up at the store here, no. right around the corner. So the wall of sheep has also been going on since several years. And last year, Xavier was so kind to implement a skin filter. So what did you guys do? I saw some blue porn, some smurfs on there, some zombies, Avatar, what the furniture. some furniture, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> always nice. So there's always I a cat and mouse people. game going on, so if you change the filter to detect some other stuff, you guys find some other stuff to get on a wall of sheep, mm -hmm, it's, it's mm -hmm. a cat and mouse game, it will continue, so it's, it's fun, absolutely. And then now, uh, the 10th edition, we had a crazy idea of making something like this, more information later. We, someone had a crazy idea to do a three-day conference. Yes. <laughs> and, and, I'm yes. sorry? <laughs> yeah, yes. I know. <laughs> so, and we still had some parking issues, like, you see it on the list, like every year here in Ghent, we always had nice news from the police. I think last year was the best one. We had three different police officers coming by. Three different explanations on how we should arrange the parking signs, which signs to have, where to park. So very fun. Yeah, but the previous guy said this. No, 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 it should be like this. 
and none one of the three was the same. We got parking fines while we were legally parked in here. Well, we just accept this. It's, it's impossible to change Gantt for that one, yeah. I guess. Yeah, for sure. So I guess the next thing is the badges. You can see. Um, First thing we have to say, I want a big round of applause for Jean-Georges Fall. He designed this badge. It's, it's almost a one-man job. All the designs, all the component picking was all done by him. <coughs> Yesterday and the day before, we had help for some solder soldiers. You see them on the right, soldering the last components on there, the screens needed to put on there, the batteries. So thanks for them. Otherwise, we wouldn't even have this one. Then yesterday evening, I think at 2 or 3 a.m., we found the last issue that is now resolved. So the firmware to have all the functionality of the batch will be released soon. We're working on the last kinks. <laughs> Important for you guys, try to charge your battery tonight. It's just micro USB, charge it for four to five hours at least, and then tomorrow you'll get a new firmware on there. If it's released earlier, we'll tweet it out. We'll also show you how to do it, and we will have a flashing station in the ICS village, and then all functionality should be there. We love Chinese suppliers. Thank God for their shipping times, for customs, for saying we get this component and then getting a different one and not shipping enough. Uh, you gotta love these people. But I have to say, for me, it looks nice. We did something else this year. Yes. So, again, we set up some new ideas for the 10th edition. When we were brainstorming this 10th edition, obviously, we had like, okay, we need to have the founders here, right? So those were, were one of the key things. But we also said, like, we've always been saying hacking for beer, but we've never had our own beer. So why don't we do this? And then we started. Obviously, there was a lot of tasting involved. We needed to select a very good beer. Um, QA, Tom. QA. QA, QA, quality control. And, and to also, again, with the necessary hiccups and the necessary issues, with all, like having it all arranged, getting the labels on it, getting everything approved and so forth. But we managed to get it here on time. Yeah, so it is beer whiskey infused beer. So they brew the beer, and then out of the leftovers, they distill whiskey, and that whiskey is infused in this beer to get like a nice round 10% alcohol percentage for the 10th edition. <laughs> We, there, we will be selling it at the bar. I'm saying the 10%. Pay attention. We are also selling gift bags, special edition ones with Brucon engraved glasses, and a bottle of beer. So feel free to taste the beer, and if you like it, grab some for home. If you are traveling by plane, we have bubble wrap and everything to wrap it up so that nothing breaks. So I think all of the new things we wanted to bring, the three years, um, I think we explained already. We have a slide why, why, how we came to the three years uh, talk selection, right? The special yeah. retro thing, is it on. still coming? Okay, so um, let's, so I guess one of the most important things which we definitely want to address. And obviously by starting to make a list, there's a chance that you'll forget somebody. So I'll already start with an ex apology for people and we might have forgotten. But we hope we can summarize somewhat. Cheers, guys. Cheers. We were able to summarize. Yeah, here we go. So we really hope we were able to summarize and I get everybody so on, the, on the slide um, who was somewhat involved. Obviously, we cannot list all the volunteers, which are yeah, more important than ever. That's Without good. them, we would never be able to do that. So but you see here, huh? we have the founders, and yeah, you guys founded it with a few people. Our current crew, you see listed there. Huh? So Philip is still in the crew. Then we have myself, we have Stefan, uh, Matt. Uh, yeah, some people are still working, so they're manning the registration booth. Uh, Tom here, Xavier, Jochen, Peter. Uh, Larry. Who's Larry, who's in Sydney. We have Stephanie, we have Bertrand there standing at the back, and we have Marijke. We have a few people who really put in a lot of effort during the years. And for that, we have Jon Olvoet, Clema Hersens, Jasmina Charlier, she does most of our administration. We have Trey, 
Uh, Peter van Overschelde, who did for years all the speakers. We have Philip, and we will be forgetting people. And we have Didier Stevens. He's the only one who spoke or gave a workshop at all Brucons. <laughs> yes. And so Didier is still giving a training at this <laughs> moment. <laughs> yeah, Philip, you want to say something? Guys, give a big hand for applause. These guys in a purple shirt. You don't know how much time they've put into Brooklyn 10. You cannot believe it, but I think it's at, at least yeah. 12 months full time. Certainly the guys that helped out yesterday with the badges, mm -hmm. swear it, the stress level was very high. Uh, but they did a great job. I'm not going to read all the names, but know these guys which are in front of you, they do a hell of a job. And they promised me right now uh, that they will take Brucon to the next level and they will continue to do it. Otherwise, that would not be broken. So give a big hand for these guys. Thanks. Yeah. Cheers, guys. Thanks. Thank you, Philip. Yeah. And so we also want to thank all the volunteers here because without them, it wouldn't be possible. We had someone who chose a very nice color for the volunteer shirts, so we'll always be able to find them. They're nicely pink. So thank you as well, volunteers. And I guess, I guess something, I think I mentioned it last year during the opening, but I think we also f need to give a thanks to the people who come to Burkhan. I mean, this year again, we actually, we sold out in a month without even having a schedule online. I mean, people buy tickets without knowing who's going to come and talk. That is actually for us a confirmation that we're doing the right thing because you guys want to come anyway because of the way that we try to organize. And, and I guess you have somewhat of trust in our selection of getting good speakers, good talks, good workshops here to Ghent. So we couldn't obviously do this without you guys and we're doing it for you when we get this, this kind of feedback back. So if you see these people in these type of shirts or any volunteers or go up to the founders and we have some feedback to share, positive or things you would like to see to improve, come and talk to us. We really want to take this forward and we really want to improve even more. So thank you for that. So, we have some scheduled things checkscat.org or the website, that's up to date. So if there are any changes, we'll publish it there. We have the links on our website. We will be adding some additional workshops. They will be added uh, in about 30 minutes. Uh, yeah, we will release them at 11 sharp today. So if you want to attend some more workshops, try to register on those. We had the bad news that we had to cancel the Mimikatz workshop, but it will be taken over by Nikhil, yep. uh, who will be giving an awesome AD workshop. We also had one cancel for the retro day today. Chris Nickerson, he couldn't join. Uh, something urgent came in between, uh, but we moved up all the things. So we're still looking forward to an awesome schedule. Tonight, there will be a mentor and tea night. The goal of that night is to mingle around. There will be able to get stickers if you are looking, if you want to be a mentor or if you're looking for a mentor, please wear the stickers and talk to each other. It's always nice to see people outside of your own uh, work bubble and just, uh, to see if you want maybe help someone out who's new or starting or want to change maybe somewhere in the field. Please show up at the Novotel Bar. We will also be recording a Nerdland podcast here in this hall. It's a Flemish uh, podcast that will be done in English for the first time now by Lieve Scher and Jeroen Baart. Uh, some people might know them. So that will be just here uh, later tonight. It's also in the schedule. Tomorrow evening there will be the party. We change venues. It will now be on a boat. Don't fall in the water, please. <laughs> or be sure you can swim. <laughs> so the retro day, again, one of these ideas. It actually, I think it came from Xavier, right? You were the one who came up with the idea to have, have people vote. Yeah. yeah. So Xavier came up with the idea. Why don't we let people vote and, and vote which talk they liked most of the last nine years. Uh, and based upon the, po the most popular talks, let's re-invite them and let them do a retro talk. Mm -hmm. Like essentially do the same talk they did back then with some additional slides or let's show that security has evolved. Let's try to bring that. So 
it, it took a lot of effort getting all the descriptions, everything on one in, on one place where people were allowed to vote. So we allowed people to vote, give them their preference for, for, for the talks. There was even like some winner and contest. So some people even got free tickets uh, to book on, got a free training, depending on um, well, the, the winners obviously from the voting system. And then we re-invited all of these speakers. And these are the speakers you're gonna see today. Essentially, that will bring something that's always, that already has been presented. Could be nine years ago, could be five years ago. Uh, and they essentially, we've been asked them, we asked them to bring more or less the same talk on the same topic and explain us what, how it evolved. So what has changed over the last couple of years? And so this is essentially the way today. This is what you're gonna see today. Uh, you'll see the schedule over here. Um, you, yeah, do go on the schedule website to get all the details and description on there as well. Uh, and, and this is what you can expect today. So this is something new, a new experiment, the third day to our conference. And we're really, really looking forward to this. I know I've been talking to some, I don't see Stefan already looking at me, <laughs> to some, and he's prepared some really cool stuff. So I'm, I, I'm really excited about this day and, and uh, because I, I really want to end up with a positive note and get a good feeling about the fact that we evolved as an InfoSec community and that we managed to solve the problem somewhat. Not completely, but at least a little bit. Okay, so I think we can stop it. We ran a bit late, so sorry, Matti, for this one. Uh, small announcement first. It's not allowed to have drinks or food in this hall, so no one saw this. <laughs> uh, we will have someone guarding the door. <laughs> no, no. Thanks again, for guys, for being here, for starting it all. Thanks the current crew for organizing it. Thank you for being here, our retro speakers for coming back, and all the new talks we're going to see tomorrow and the day after. Guys, enjoy and thank you for being at Brucon again.